Good morning. Good morning. It's it, gray again. It's gray again. But we had a couple of nice days. We did. And it wasn't there. too cold this morning, right. which was, was nice. Put some shorts on and a t-shirt and go walk. That was that nice. That was nice. Nice break in yeah. the middle of winter. Got we, some vitamin D. That's all good. Yeah. That's all good. It's fasting day. It is fasting day. So we have uh, we have some turmeric and uh, cinnamon. cinnamon tea today. Right. So that's, that's always fun. Um, how was your workout? My workout was good, interestingly. So, you know, I did my 10 minute blitz. Okay. Then I started, then I did back. And then I did um, abs. Right. But so, what, I, what occurs to me, so the 10 minute blitz, because it's such high intensity for a short period of time, mm -hmm. I'm a little windy when I get off. And my very first exercise for back is to do a giant set of um, lat pull downs. Um, I don't even know what to call it, but it's like when you kind of just use your. They just kind of go like this with this part of yeah, your body. Yeah, do the half lap right, thing, right, yeah. to get a little extra. And then I do the rope um, rows, and then mm -hmm. I do the uh, straight arm lat pull downs right. as a giant set. And so what a giant set means, for those who don't know, is you do all four exercises without stopping. Just then, back to back to back to back. Right, and doing then you back. rest. And then you do all four <laughs> exercises again, then you rest. And I did that for like five sets. And after I got done with that, I went to my next exercise. Notice my legs were just a little not quite under me. You know? <laughs> a little but, wobbly. Right, but I drank some more water and all that, and then I got back, I got them back, and I got I had a really good workout. But it's just funny. I'm like, oh, so that's why. It was like one of those <laughs> duh <laughs> moments. Had a moment there. Yeah, so that was interesting. Oh, that's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, I did legs today, and I switched up my leg workout. Um, I've been a little bored with it, so I did a lot of body weight exercises today, as opposed to weight lifting exercises today. Right. So we'll uh, we'll see how my legs appreciate that tomorrow. Now, the funny thing is, no matter how you change it, when you change up your routine, your body seems okay. Yeah. You're gonna have to have a discussion about. Well, this. and it changed the lactic acid definitely. Right. I could feel the difference in the right. in the lactic acid. Right. So. Which is actually we'll good from time happens. to time. Yeah. You know. Changes your body, gets it back in motion. Yep. And then I had a guy stop and ask me some questions about uh, diet and exercise and and uh, whatnot. And it was funny because I was talking to him about eating dark greens. Yeah. And he, he was like, oh, yeah, I like asparagus. Oh, but I put bacon on it. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, that's, um, not, that's not how to take a perfectly good food and ruin it. And make yeah. it a bad food. Yeah. yeah. But so yesterday we talked to you guys about dairy and the risks of dairy and how the uh, protein in, in dairy is um, associated pretty strongly with promoting cancer and how um, it's addictive because the, the protein in it or the enzymes in it are meant to have you know, calves come back for more because that's how right. it keeps them growing. So it, it actually hits our mammalian brain very similarly. So it's addictive, which is why giving up dairy is one of the hardest things. When we talk to people about giving up dairy, I can't tell you how often I hear, oh, but I love cheese. And it's trust me, oh. Sorry. <laughs> um, I understand because I was definitely that person that lived on dairy and I could not even imagine right. um, life without dairy in, in the past. So I do get it. So we talked about that pretty extensively yesterday. Right. And then um, also yesterday I ended up on, some of you may have cut it, we did an impromptu live video with Ivan Thomas. He reached out to me and was like, hey, can you jump on my live? And aside from the fact that I looked completely dead in the lighting <laughs> that we had, it was really bad. I looked terrible. Uh, we had a really good conversation. We ended up on doing 40 minutes 40 of minutes. live video talking yeah. about you know, high performance success. We talked about happy to listen. We talked about um, health and wellness. Like we, talk, we talked about a lot of stuff. Right. But one of the questions that I got yesterday was, okay, so if dairy is something that I should give up, what do I replace it with? And I realized we didn't have that conversation have that yesterday conversation. at all. Um, so I wanted to kind of get into that a tiny bit today about what do you, how do you replace dairy? What does that look like? So the first thing you have to figure out is, well, how are you using dairy? That's, that's the first question. So obviously a lot of people use it in their coffee. It's used as a creamer. It's used to make mashed potatoes. Um, some people drink it. Just regularly, cheese is used as um, as a binder and as a flavor and as a fat in a lot of um, casseroles. So that, that's the first thing I always ask clients is, well, how are you using dairy? Let's figure that out first because I can't help you replace it if I don't know what you're doing with it. And so when we first switched, I know you used to put milk in your oatmeal every yes, morning. Yes, yes. Not a lot, but, you know, enough to wet it. Right. Yeah. So, he, you know, he would put, let's say, a quarter cup. I don't really even know. A quarter <laughs> cup of milk in his oatmeal every morning. <laughs> Good morning, Kristen. Good to see you. Morning. Thanks for being here. 
We're not even eating almonds. I know. Uh, ironically, though, I, I used to use skim milk. Right. Which we found out is worse now. Than regular milk, yeah. Because they're saying what happens when you take the fat out of milk is you make the protein percentage higher, and that makes it worse for you. So if you're going right. to drink milk, drink whole fat milk and drink raw milk, not raw milk, sorry, organic yeah. milk. Yeah. Um, so, but when we first switched, we switched to almond milk. Right. And we had that for a while that you we were did. using. But yes. now you've just gone to plain water. Yeah, I just use oatmeal. water now. Yeah. yeah. And so, and I like to have... Um, I don't, we don't drink coffee anymore, but we used to mm -hmm. um, prior and I used to put cream, like heavy cream in right. my coffee and I used a flavored like vanilla fake stuff and all of that. So um, we did for a while also have the almond milk that was vanilla flavored and the almond milk that was sweetened. Right. So we kind of stepped down where we, we started out with flavor, uh, vanilla flavored sweetened almond milk right. and then we had just sweetened almond milk right. with no vanilla flavor and then we had just almond milk that was unsweetened, unsweetened yeah. and now in our in our oatmeal we just mm -hmm. use water i go ahead i was gonna say and the reason why i just decided for myself not to use the almond milk anymore is because you really can't find i mean i haven't been able to unless you pay a really high price for it almond milk that's just almond milk right and you can make it yourself right. that's definitely right, right. possible I mean, the almond milk we buy in it and i won't mention the brands but they are the most popular ones when you look at the ingredients, they don't only have the almond milk, but then they have 15 other, you know, words I can't pronounce, ingredients in there. Right, and, and they're I'm processed like, ah. food, they are. So it's um, like, sometimes it's a battle to try to find healthy food, you know. But, it, just, you know, it's a good step-down option if you want to do that. And I do keep almond milk in the house because I do have some recipes that I make that call right. for it. So um, I put it in the corn muffins yeah. I make have it. Sometimes when I make um, mashed potatoes, I'll put it in there. And... Um, Laura makes a really good point. There are a ton of other uh, plant-based milks out there. There's, um, I, and I, it's scrolled so I can't read it, but there, she wrote a few. There's, I know, coconut milk. There's uh -huh. hemp milk. Yeah. There's soy. There's cashew. There's cashew. Uh, what else did I say? Yeah, there's a lot of different options. So I would definitely encourage you to, you know, look for the one that suits your needs the best. Right. And, and then just keep it in the house. They are uh, shelf stable, which means they do have, you can keep them in your pantry, but that means they do have stuff in them that you may not prefer to eat. Right. And like Laura said, you can make them yourself. Right. I'm not sure if it's super cost effective. That's when we looked at That's it. It seemed like it was at. more expensive yeah. to make it than it was to buy it. Right. Um, but that is definitely an option when it comes to the milk part of it. There are a lot of plant-based milks. And are they, do they taste exactly the same as milk? No, no. they don't. They taste different. But they are um, a replacement option, and you can step them down to you know, whatever level you feel is right for you. Right, right. Um, she says it's cheaper to, uh, to make it. She says she's just lazy. <laughs> it is, I mean, it does take some work. You have to soak them and you have to, and I don't feel like I have a, a blender that would do it. Like I don't have one of those real high power blenders. Yeah. So I don't think mine would do it. Cause I've tried to make cashew cheese, which is, and we've talked about it briefly before. You can take cashews and soak them and you add um, nutritional yeast and lime juice. And I can't, maybe there's cumin in it and you blend it really aggressively in it. It's supposed to become like creamy and it's, and vegans use it as cheese. Right. I've made it, to call it cheese, I think is a stretch. Well, you know what, you know what cheese is? <laughs> fat. It's, oh yeah, I mean, and that's it. And it's a dairy product. And, and it's saturated it, fat. And, and we mentioned this, um, and we use the term today, replacements for, and I, I don't know, I kind of think that's a little misnomer. Yeah. It's just, it's more about learning a different way to eat. I and agree And finding that. things that, um, I mean, if you need to, need the psychological thought of, of what you're putting on it, like we right. use, you use nutritional yeast when you make lasagna. I do. And I like it because I actually like the way it crusts up a little bit and all that. So I kind of like it. Right. Yeah. I mean, we do like, so nutritional yeast you can put on stuff. We like it better when we heat it. So if you put it in something and then heat it, we like it better. I'm not a fan of nutritional yeast um, dry or cold. I feel like it's powdery right. and I don't, I, the texture's like... And I haven't been able to convince myself to do it on popcorn yet. No. Because I'm just not convinced that you spray it with water, it's going to stay. And so I'm just, I don't know. Yeah. I'm still battling that. Yeah. So we have that challenge. Um, but so nutritional yeast you can get at your health food stores. 
Um, you can get it online. It's available. And I had never heard of it until we went plant-based. Right. And it's a super healthy uh, option for you. Yes. It's got, I think it has some vitamin B in it, B12. It, it's super nutritious, yeah. It's got protein in it. It's a really nutritious thing on top of supposedly having kind of a cheesy flavor. Right. So that's good. You can make the cashew cheese, which is certainly an option. Right. And um, I do use it on, like, if I have pasta with sauce, I'll put it the pasta out, and then I'll put the nutritional yeast down, and then the sauce on top of that. And that seems to do a pretty good job of, of making it, you know, taste really yeah. good. And nutritional yeast does have a flavor to it. Yes. Um, I personally don't think it's a cheesy flavor, but that's just me. Well, I'm sure you could find a cheese out there that may taste like it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's probably just not the cheeses that we used to eat, which is what the Gouda and, uh, right. and cheddar, cheddar. Yeah. you know. I mean, those are specifically flavored cheeses. So, right. So that's the difficulty, right? I mean, how many different types of cheese are there? Yeah. yeah, and there are a lot. If you go out and like search for um, options, there are out options out there. There are vegan cheeses. Now, the, the issue I have with them, and I haven't looked at them extensively, so Laura, you can maybe give, me, uh, give us some feedback because I'm sure you have more knowledge on it than I do. What I've found with vegan cheeses is they seem to have a lot of oil in them. Yeah. And the way that they're made, they have a lot of um, oil. And that, that for me, I mean, it's going to give you the mouthfeel of cheese, which is right. probably what they're looking for when they make it. But for me, that defeats the purpose. If I'm not eating regular cheese because <laughs> it, uh, it's not healthy for me, I don't want to replace it with something else that's not healthy with, for me, which is right. what I consider oil. Right. And I see Christian says that just nutritional use is yummy on popcorn. I've not figured yet, I've not yet figured out how to apply it. Yeah. So I'm still battling that. Um, not, at least not applied to where I like the way it's, it sits on there. So yeah. I'm still playing. I think I need to get him a real good mister for yeah. um, for water or maybe for, um, some vegetable Well, I also broth. heard vinegar. I heard some people say they used vinegar as a mist. Yeah. You know, diluted and you vinegar. like vinegar. I do like vinegar. I don't know if I'd like it on popcorn. I mean, I don't know. We, yeah. Well, yeah. So we have to get a good a good mister, I guess, for the popcorn. Because that's the one place that Russ does still use um, a little bit of butter, which obviously would like to eliminate um the longer away from cheese the longer you really won't remember what it tastes like i've that's definitely true. found that yeah that's true yeah yeah i mean for me and, and you know you see me do this when we go to when we go out to events and they even have you know um the little platters out there where when we first started doing this i'd pick a piece of cheese or two and i, I look at now you look at you're like not food no, no i don't want it i just don't want it you yeah know, it's i'm not even hesitant to take the, the vegetables but i'm like oh what did they do to keep it you know fresh and yeah so i kind of battle with that too yeah so, so you see that um laura put a whole list of stuff she says the higher end uh, vegan cheeses don't have as much oil in them and they're fermented so maybe give those a try and maybe we can look into those we can if look we into them, sure. you know want to serve them to guests or whatever so Oh, she said, so Kristen says on popcorn that uh, water, but not broth. Okay. Oh, I don't know water do and broth do work. Sorry, right. I can't read, apparently, yeah. from here. So, um, high-end cultured nut cheeses. All right, we'll have to go take a look, see what we can find, try them, and report back. Yes. But the point being, the, the point that I wanted to go back and touch on why we did a dairy day two was that there are replacements out there for dairy. Right. You don't have to just eliminate it from your diet and then too bad you don't have it anymore. Right. There are ways, and we, like I said, we stepped down from um, cow's milk to almond milk that was sweetened and flavored to almond milk that was just sweetened to almond milk that was plain. And now we don't even use it in a lot of things. I just right. keep it for specific recipes yes, exactly. that we put it in. And, and as we always say, it's not about um, severing, severing, Severing. Thank you. The cord. <laughs> it's about you know stepping down and um, doing it at the pace that works for you. It doesn't have to right. be perfect. You just have to make progress. Right. And that's what it's about. Each day that you can do something that's better for your health, the better off you're going to be. That's going to give you a better option. Exactly. So um, and th so that's our recommendation as far as as not having dairy, which we and we walk we listened more to the uh, China study book last night, and it had a whole nother host of information yeah. about just how horrible dairy is for the human body. So I know it's hard to give up, but, but like Laura pointed out, the longer you're away from it, the less your body says, oh, I want that because right. the addiction gets less strong. You lose strong. the addiction, exactly. So right. I think that's, that, that's a good point too, is that you, it will get better. I promise it will get better. Yeah. So um, that, and that's, that's a great tip too. Somebody said it yesterday on our, our live with um, Ivan. If you're going to do one thing, if you're going to start with one thing, start with giving up dairy because right. that's going to make a huge difference yeah, for I your mean, life. And you said this, and I'm just repeating what you said, but just 
it's just horrific for the human body. It really is. It's just not meant to be consumed by humans. Right? That's why it comes out of cows. I get that. But I mean, <laughs> you know, if it was meant to be consumed by humans, I guess it'd come out of humans, right? Um, right. But it's just not. I mean, even breast milk from humans mm -hmm. is not meant to, to sustain life for longer than, a, than... Like three years. Yeah. You know? And that's it. And then, you know, you got to start eating real food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like we say. Real food so, that grows out of the ground. Right, exactly. So and that's it. That's yeah. how I feel on that. So that's what we wanted to add about that. Um, we've told you guys before, if you're local, we're doing a speaking event that's going to be free to attend on the 2nd at 6 o'clock at the Newark Natural Store in, uh, obviously, Newark. Mm -hmm. So join us. There's an event on um, the Newark Natural Store's um, Facebook page. I've shared it. I'll share it again. But we'd love for you to join us. If you're getting value out of these vid vid videos, please do like and share them for us so that please. we can reach more people. Right. And stop by and like our page on Facebook. And come by our website, rnrjourney.com, and sign up for our newsletter. I send it out once a week with uh, tips, ideas, suggestions, things you can use. And also I include in there what's new on the website so that you can uh, learn what we're adding to the website right. that's useful. And that button is on the top right-hand side, and I changed it yesterday from saying stay informed to join our, our mailing list. Oh, did you? I did because... I don't know. I just looked at it and I said, well, maybe people don't understand what stay informed means. Right. You know? All right. So it so, has an envelope on it. Right. So. And now it says, uh, you know, join our mailing list. So we'd love to have you join us if you're interested in getting more information from us that way. Is there anything else that I forget? It seems like every time we shut it off, I'm like, it's wrapped. I forgot to say. You know what the good thing about that is? We get to do it again tomorrow. 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 You're going to sing? It's only a day. Away. You're a weird human. I am a weird human. All right. Say good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that, we will say, eat real food, not too much, mostly, mostly plants. plants. Have a great day, we'll guys. We'll see you tomorrow.